What up, what up, it's your boy Hitmaker, my brother, hey, you with me? We just finished our interview for Hollywood Unlock Uncensored. It was crazy. He, uh, he kept it political. Me, on the other hand, stay tuned, nigga. What up, everybody? This is Jason Lee. This is Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. And I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. And typically, we would have a big distraction sitting in that seat right there, but <laughs> Giovanni is not here. No, um, not. But A1 and Young Berg, I can't believe we got Young Berg in the building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I, 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 I don't think this is a reckless show, and I know you were just recently on The Breakfast Club, so you're used to this reckless shit. And privately, you're a reckless motherfucker. <laughs> so... The well, fact- we did ask him, you know, like, how reckless are you feeling? He's like, oh, I'm with the shits. And I was like, good answer. And then you come in here with A1, <laughs> who, I mean, we've been trying to dig up dirt on him. Can't find a, shit. That boy clean, so, ain't he? He has such a great story. I'm like, this is definitely, a, you know, not the devil and the angel, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, we like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. It's good yeah. cop, bad cop on yeah. a whole bunch right, of different yeah. things. Well, I think the viewers that are watching clearly know who the good cop is and who the bad cop is. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, it, it depends. Yeah, it, 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 it switches. Depends. Okay, so... Here we are. There's so much to talk about. I guess where, where do we where do we start? Do we, where do you want to start? Just go, bro. This show shit. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Masika's feet on Love and Hip Hop. <laughs> oh. oh my god. I mean, because I've been trying to do this study with all the women that Tierra Marie was just on the show. Mm-hmm. We talked a lot about the work you guys did, mm-hmm. and then I, I have five sisters. So I've been trying to figure out between them and their foot doctors how the foot actually can get dirty. Uh, that way, but especially when you know you got to shoot. What, did when you, you saw, when you saw the foot, did you did you, did it take you back to times you were laying in bed and you had a little moment <laughs> like boomerang where you're like, baby, the feet. Nah, yo, <laughs> me and Masika, ironically or not, were like best friends. Like we never even had no like we never had sex or did nothing prior to love and hip hop. I've known her forever. We used just to kick it, drink, mm-hmm. have a great time or whatever. And then once I got on the show, I was dating another woman named Joy. Um, shout out to Bow Wow. And then yes. I can't see. There we are and with then, the shits. <laughs> um, from there, Joy ended up parting ways with the show, and then me and her relationship ended up fizzling out. And um, the next thing I know, I got off the. Um, I was working with Puff in Miami, and I got off the plane, and they came to pick me up from the airport, and they like, "Yo, like dressing shorts and like a t-shirt or whatever." I'm thinking I'm going to play basketball with Soldier Boy or somebody else, and mm-hmm. they pu- I pull up, and I'm at Hazel House. Of course, I know where Hazel live. And so I, th- I threatened to quit Wait, but the how, show. How'd you know how Hazel, because you had already been there before. Nah, H- Hazel was managed by my brother, Doc. I've known Hazel okay. for like eight, nine years. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Big Hazel when she was under the act. <laughs> okay, so when you show up to Hazel's house. <laughs> no, like they, like we had filmed all this time. I had a girlfriend on the show. We filmed for probably like two and a half months. And then we pulled up to Hazel crib. And um. I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? And, so were um, they trying to make it look like you were, you know, comfortable and going to your girlfriend's house or slick. maybe just having left your girlfriend's house? They made it look like a scene like we had spent the night with each other. And that was your walk of shame outfit? Yeah. Gotcha. And like, I kind of was like, I'm quitting the show. Like, I'm not doing it. And then Mona <laughs> popped up like Corella DeVille out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> Berg, you're my Stevie J of Hollywood. And, and let, me, let me just say, wow. for, 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 <laughs> as a disclaimer, because we want A1 to stay on Love Oh, yeah, time. yeah. <laughs> and all my views are... <laughs> Politically, they my views. My brother, you know, he missed the love. The, view, the views expressed by Young Berg. Shout um, out to Mona. Don't 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 connect them to A one, and I'll tell you if they connect to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so you didn't hit it that day. I mean, you when did the whole Masika thing come about? Because clearly, you guys did, ended up having some type of relationship. To be very honest with you, once they made me kind of kiss Hazel on the show, because like the whole thing was, it's like. So you didn't want to kiss Hazel? I was dating Joy, and oh. I got back, and we ended our relationship, and the first thing scene I did was at Hazel's house. That's oh. why I was being so crazy to her, like, you ain't never been my bitch. You ain't never been this. You know what I'm saying? And then we would jump off camera, and I'd be like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like, But knowing the show, and A1 could vouch for it, like, when you, and you, you as well, like, when you dealing with those producers, you're telling them your side of the story, Correct. how you feel. So I think the whole time she was telling them, like, yo, I think I really got feelings for Berg. It was something mm-hmm. like that. And then I was like, like shocked. So did you? So knowing that you were going home to Joey, Joe, is it Joey? Joy, Joy. You you love Joy at the time. Yeah, I still love Joy. Joy is a bad bitch. No, Joy, she's, she's, she is. She's, she is she's hot. Beautiful. Yeah. She so, is hot. So were you thinking at the time that you were gonna leave her for Hazel? Fuck no. <laughs> Yo, bro, bro, come on, man. Don't do not do that. Okay. Right? Just Put try- Joy and Hazel in a fucking split screen and tell me who you leaving well, for. Well, as gay as I am, I, every woman to me ends up being in the same category. 
Not for me. <laughs> okay, so when you end up, so how does the whole Masika thing come about? So she ends up becoming a part of the story. How? Well, me and Masika were always cool, and um, the the bottom line is that like once they had me do that whole shit with Hazel and all the other shit, I was just like, fuck it. And Mona came to me like, I think Masika loves you. Would you guys be open to kissing on camera? And I was like. Yeah, y'all had me kiss this bit like yo, like this is an upgrade. Like, come on, run it out. You know what I'm saying? So, we ended up kissing in that scene or whatever, and then from there we went to Akon House after that or whatever. We had a great time, and then that night we ended up having sex. Okay, so, so wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay. the, the, so the first night that you guys were in the first scene together, y'all had sex. Yeah, but we had known each other. Like we had played around. Like we had made out. You know what I'm saying? Scratch and sniff. You know, see what the pussy smells wow. like. That type of thing. You know, what these I'm aren't saying? games like, that I play with my male friends. Scratch and sniff. Like, that's a new one. One right. of them. You know what I'm saying? So, so, and then so you fucked that night. Yeah. Okay. okay. So okay. So this is I'm a novice to the mm -hmm. whole love and hip hop. So I don't know the whole history. Right. It, but is that part of the reason why Masika and Hazel? I'm sorry, Erica hate each other. Did it start know. with you? Her and Hazel used to be roommates. They hate each other. Just, yeah, I heard all about the, them Bye. stories. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I guess it did. But what you got to understand is that if you don't have an interesting storyline, mm -hmm. you don't get no check. If you're not oh, in I the episode, that. you don't get paid. So half of me is thinking like, yo, she really feels this way. And half of me is like, she's trying to get that back. Mm. <laughs> and so, mm. so then when you guys click up and become um, uh, a, a duo... Who? You and Masika. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so did you did you did you check was her feet how what was her foot game like then? <laughs> Yo, let me be clear. Like Masika is a very clean and like great woman. Like our time we spent together, she used to be making like Alfredo sauce from scratch and <laughs> just doing real motherly like things. Like she she is down she hungry. Okay. Yeah. So did you guys know each other back when he was how long have you guys known each other? Oh man, we we didn't know each other about six years. Yeah. We oh, uh we while. actually had a a studio room. He had a studio room downstairs in North Hollywood and I had one upstairs. We never worked. Never. So are you guys working out of the same studio that I've been to before? We business partners, so yeah. everything okay. that we do is together. That studio is pretty lit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now when he comes to you and says, Listen, I just kissed Hazel on camera or me and Hazel have our moment and we're developing this on <laughs> this relationship. Do you say to him, bruh, what about Joey? Or do you say anything as a friend? We wasn't friends at you, the time. Okay, no. okay. Yeah. It was just like acquaint acquaintances. Like we, we just was in passing. We literally saw each other every day. What's up? And I go work, he go work. But were you, fr you were friends with Ray J at the time. Yeah. Okay. So Somewhat. did Ray J say that? To you, like, what the fuck you doing? Ray J's a clown to me, so yeah, well, I, it don't matter yeah, what know. he says at all. <laughs> okay, so I know WAC 100, you know WAC, you guys have had public beefs, yeah. and I know I'm getting a phone call after this show because I'm going to ask a series of questions, mm -hmm. and I just have to Run say, it. okay, are you and WAC cool now after all the stuff that went online where he was uh, coming I co-wrote the games record, All Lies, with Jeremiah, like, when his last biggest hit, and, like, me and WAC had conversations then I wouldn't say we cool though you know what I'm saying like I've probably seen that man probably five times in my whole life really yeah so when he was doing all the online stuff and trying to throw the gay stuff on you do you mm -hmm. think that that was just to discredit you or attack you or to make the blogs well do its job or it was it, it, it come like it, it's two things it's two folds because one Tierra back then when she was drinking she was messy as fuck and she really loved Ray J so like that whole thing like I think Ray didn't want her to work with me like Ray didn't want her to get no shine and then I convinced her to go back in the studio and let's work she called Wack as she was walking in the studio like I'm working with Berg and this that and the third or whatever and then Wack started blowing my phone up and he called me and I was at the boom boom room and he's like nigga I'm a wolf I'm a wolf and you out here you a sheep I'm a wolf and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna end your career and then shit shortly after shit uh, that nigga went on sway in the morning and did all that shit that I was gay and all this other shit mm -hmm. and so did you ever when you get into when one gets into it with Wack 100 Cause I've seen a bunch of stuff happen. Mm -hmm. Do you do you lock your door at night? Do you do you hire security, get more guns? What happens? Like, are you afraid or what? What? At that point, nah. Like, I mean, I'm a man at the end of the day, so like, it just come with the territory. But I mean, me and Wack 100 really don't have no issues. Mm -hmm. Like, all our issues stem from love and hip hop. Whether it was the Tierra Marie situation, like where they was talking, telling me to say this about her, you know what I'm saying? Doing things, favors for me, and all this other stuff. They was trying to make her look bad. So like, 
before the reunion, Tierra, me and her got into it and I told her I wouldn't work with her no more. And she like, I'm gonna have Ray J fuck you up at the reunion. And I was like, huh? But now it's crazy because <laughs> you and Ray are still on the show together. Yeah, yeah. And you guys just recently had the whole, uh, Let's circle go. jerk incident. Well, it was no. Let, let me. Yo, that was what it was called. Okay. Yo, I brought that my was wife. What it was called. Okay. I brought my wife. So, so to to let me just say, Hazel was recently on the show with her boyfriend Rose Burgundy. Mm -hmm. You know Rose. No. Um. Okay. So Rose Burgundy mm -hmm. and Hazel were here, and they described it as a circle jerk. Yes. They yeah, yeah. weren't no, they circle jerk. I've seen no, it. They, I know, I know. He, he gonna fuck mad. you up. He say yeah. he gonna beat me up. He gonna beat now, you up. You know what's what's crazy is bunch um, of fades. Bunch couple, of fades. You know, a couple weeks ago, you know, I ran into Rose Burgundy in the club and shit. And um, we we and actually talked. So you didn't catch the fade. Somebody did. I, I got dreads. I can't catch a fade. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, nah, we we chopped it up and actually like he a cool dude. You know yeah. what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. And, and Hazel, she cool like. Do you think, because I, I find Rose to be cool too. I mean, recently, of course, he did the whole gay flag burning and, you know, fuck all the gays and the homosexuals going to hell. And I can just I tell you, that. as a wearing. representative of the community, we run the whole industry, so we ain't really going nowhere. Mm -hmm. When you when you run into him and you heard that he wants to run the fade, what's that conversation like? Because I've never mm -hmm. had anybody on mine say they're going to run the fade and then see him in public. I don't even know what that is. Oh. What is a fade? I, ba I guess it basically means he's going to kick your ass. What is that? <laughs> okay. Good luck. Okay, so, but you're friends with Ray, and you two are business partners, and you don't like Ray. I that that dude is a TV personality. I'm an executive in the music business with one of the biggest careers right now with my brother. I'm in the music business. That nigga don't do music. I wrote that nigga last hit. But but some people would say I mean, he's Ray J. He's an entertainer. He's a mega celebrity. He's huge. He's influential. I don't rock with Ray because when Wack jumped out and did all that, the validity that was holding on to was that it was Ray J's manager accusing mm -hmm. me of that shit. And if that's your manager and he works for you, that's like my manager going on a rant about Ray J. You tell your manager to fall back if you really fuck with me and we made history. We sold like 10 million records with that sexy kind of song. And so he didn't come out and support you or defend you or say- Fuck no. Okay. And so now when you say that you're an executive, people are going to say, oh, he's not executive. Explain that. So you're over sure. at Atlantic now. What are you? We know you got money. Don't you pull out no money because my car knows oh, too. It ain't no money. Oh, I don't flex on you. You money team. Bro. Hey, you not, I not, I no, flex let's with let's that. not make no mistake about it. the T. The H U is mine. The T M T. <laughs> that's a whole other other situation. Okay, so American Express. Uh, that's his corporate card with Atlantic Records. Is the that card right? number. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it definitely says Atlantic Records. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Kaiser got Tough. you. You just swiping that card and doing whatever you want. No, you know that that shit is crazy. You can't go swipe crazy on that. But I mean. We got we we good, bro. But I will say, having been to your operation, I haven't seen you there yet. It mm -hmm. really is a, like you guys are literally in a creative prison. Yeah. yeah. And I walked in that thing because I have ADD. Mm -hmm. I cannot sit in a room for hours. These motherfuckers <laughs> are in there. I you can go to Insta Story, Snapchat. It's almost like you live in the studio. Let me just mm -hmm. say, man, ain't nobody working hard as us. Nah. We make ten to twelve records a night. Wow. And you've been able to work with Chris Brown, who I used yeah, to that's know. My brother. I knew Chris. I don't even know how many lives ago. <laughs> how do you, because you're a very level-headed, very calm, very cool guy. When you see right. you, it's like always good energy, yeah. always something positive to say, never negative. How do you work in that environment? Because from the outside, it looks like Chris is just a, around a bunch of uh, crazy people. Mm. Uh, you know what? It ain't. It's just, it's just people outside of that that try to make him look like that. He mm. actually just like me. He's just like him. He's just like you. You know what I'm saying? Like we all cool people. And um, I think people just, you know, get it fucked up. So did, did you go to this event last night? Yeah, I did. And Did you go? Of course not. I'm in the studio. I know. I was about to say, you don't go to work. <laughs> I can't pull them out. Nowhere. So, no, so no. I saw Chris recently. I was in New York with Rock Nation. They did this big event with Tidal. He performed with J-Lo and Jay-Z and all yeah. them. And mm. he had the dreads. Uh, he, I'm, thankfully, I saw last night he cut that shit off. Yeah, I mean, mm. yeah. It works because, for some people. I, it I works for say, some people. Dreads and others... for you works. Yeah. I see it. Hey, don't be coming for my brother, man. He could do anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> and not only that, Jason, like, you know, like, we not too tuned in on niggas hairstyles and shit like that. Oh, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> clearly need those details. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm doing like the backstroke and testosterone. There's the a way, lot of male way. energy in this room. I think he wears a size nine and a half Jeez. shoe. I'm dead. No, I'm just playing. Okay, so, okay, so back to you. So with Ray J. Oh, no, so so the Hazel and them saying that you all uh, did the circle jerk. When yeah. you were in the... Let's be clear, though. 
Yeah. I brought my wife. Everybody saw that. Well, how did that even come about? So basically, the the backstory behind that is there's a dare or a bet going on. Yeah, we made a bet between well, you, Ray J. Ray, Ray J. J. called out the bet. Okay, so it's you, Safari, and Ray J. Yeah. That the loser of the bet had to but, produce a track for Hazel. <laughs> is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, now. <laughs> Why? What was what was the story behind Ray J making that bet? Like he just wanted to. Well, he just felt like he could. He he been trying to make a baby. You know what I'm saying? And um, with her? Yeah, with with Princess. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Ray J has been trying to make a baby, (laughs) but Princess can't get pregnant. Okay. Yeah, so he felt like it was him. Low sperm count. So they all went to get tested. The lowest sperm count. To support him. (laughs) Yeah. So. so, out of support, it was like, yo, let's make a bet. Right. He called out the bet. I'm like, all right, I'm with it. But did you feel that was wrong? I wasn't thinking like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, nah, I wasn't thinking like that. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to lose anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I don't remember the last time I lost. <laughs> right. But, you know what I'm saying? You just like, happen to know what your sperm count is? Like your blood Nah, type? I didn't know. I've never done nothing like that. Okay. Sidebar. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> it was set up by the show. Okay. Ray know what it was. The producers know Hazel's music is ass, and they put him in a whole bunch of room with people to make a big joke out of her. Now, granted, let me let me preface that Hazel E, I love you. I have a lot of love for you, Erica. But as far as your music goes, kill yourself. Well, when she did the Power One Hundred Six interview, you actually took the clip of her doing the interview, and you went on. Instagram and you were so disrespectful like <laughs> the thing I like about Berg we, I like we, a lot about listen, Berg no, right listen, now. I'm sorry we ain't homies won't hang all the time <laughs> but I will tell you your your level your level of pettiness is literally parallel to mine I think I think it might be a little bit bigger <laughs> it's a I pause think, uh, sorry shit <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have straight men in the room Okay, so when you when you did that post, when you saw her perform, she was freestyling. Yeah. Did you not feel like she could have joined Atlanta Records and been a part of the hit maker squad and got that platinum plaque that we all fight for when we become artists? I thought it was some of the worst shit I ever heard in my life. <laughs> okay. Everybody did, though. Like, this shit is public fucking information. I don't want nobody coming for me after they see this shit. Like, yo, Berg, like, you out of pocket. Like, you just going crazy. Like, yo, if it's trash, it's trash. And if it ain't, you know what I'm saying? Somebody has to be the board and the level. Because I think out here in Hollywood, a lot of people be getting shit misconstrued and thinking they can do things or put on these type of gases or whatever for whatever type of situation. Yo, if it's good music, it's good music. If it's not, it's not. Oh, yeah, no. LA, I've always said it. Tell me if I'm wrong, that this is the land of mediocrity. This yeah. is the land of it, it. It's okay. It passes, and it's like no, that ain't that shit ain't fire. Wait, wait. So where are you originally from? I'm from Kansas City, Kansas, you're from, and you're from Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, we both from the Midwest. So, so Midwest. Mm-hmm. Okay. So being from the Midwest, when you come here to the city, what is the experience? Is it? I mean, because you're in Hollywood, you're working, and, and the one mm-hmm. thing I like about you on the show in comparison to a lot of other people is there are a lot of people on the show that ain't fucking working, right? Yeah. Nah, you see me. I got what, what we got like thirty some singles out. What, 19 on Chris Brown's new album dropped yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, I Tough. downloaded it this morning. Tough. So mm-hmm. whatever royalties y'all get, you know, <laughs> appreciate that. So, so so when you're when you come to LA and you migrate here and you get in the game, when do you figure out that it's all not real? Shit. You wanna handle that? Go ahead. I say like, man, after a couple years, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, when you get to seeing how fake people are. Yeah, people are like, you know, let's take a meeting to talk about taking another meeting, but nothing ever. Yeah, gets yeah, done. exactly. Yeah. Why, why instituted a three meeting rule a long time ago? First meeting, what we talking about? What you got? What I got? <laughs> yeah. How can this work? Second yeah. meeting, here's the plan. Here's what I'm gonna do. There's what you're gonna do. How much it's gonna cost? Third plan, here's the check. If by that we ain't got the check, you got to meet with all these other people mm. because I I wasted time for a long time. Mm-hmm. So is that when you decided? Fucking, I'm out of the streets, I'm out of the clubs, I'm in the studio working all day long. Because literally, when you say you're there all the time, you really are. Mm-hmm. I didn't did it at all, Jason. Like, we got to think about that. Like, my first single came out oh, 10 years ago. Sexy Lady and the business and all that shit. So it's like, I'm just evolving. I'm in a different space right now. Like, it's not about being in a club. It's about making the music that y'all listen to and dance to in a club for me. Mm-hmm. So speaking of Masika's feet, when she calls 911 <laughs> and says you're beating her up in a room, right? Do you do you what do you think? Like do you because all that you, shit was all that shit was false though. You had explained to me the story, but for people, I couldn't really find a lot of places where you talked about it. So I wanted to Well, long story short, like that shit never happened. And um it was kind of weird to me, you know what I'm saying? Because like all this shit was traumatized and they did the, all this shit on the show, and like me and Masika were literally like 
together. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow, all this shit was happening. There's no more case and none of that shit, so I could talk freely about it. And it's just like, you know, they kind of went at me hard when they didn't see anything. Like, you watch people assault people on camera. You know what I'm saying? Not, And I'm not saying anything that I did because we never had a physical altercation. We had a situation where two people argue with each other. Of course, y'all know Masika. You know, she's... She's, she's there in that that level of mm -hmm. dra dramatics, you know what I'm saying? And I'm kind of crazy too. So when you mix that together, I think that's what happens. And um, a lot of people was just like- So you had shot the reunion. You guys were at the hotel. Uh huh. She's giving you head or no? We weren't even staying in the same room. So what really <laughs> happened was, um, man, dog, we did the reunion. And like, you know, the reunion is long as fuck. You mm -hmm. know that shit too. Yeah. I was drinking a whole reunion. So it got probably like towards the end and I started drinking out of Ray J cup. And I think he had like a Molly or Adderall inside his cup and didn't tell me. And I've done a Molly before, you know what I'm saying? But it's like when you get a drink and you're not expecting it, it took me all the way off. So me and Treva, Masika, we went to um, cafeteria in New York. And um, that's when they were saying like, yo, your credit card didn't work. Like I was traveling, you know what I'm saying? And like they took, I, I left Masika in the, in the restaurant. Like I was feeling woozy. I left my credit card there and I'm like, yo, I'm out. I walked outside, I smoked a cigarette and then I just jumped in a cab. And like Masika's running down the street like, yo, this is my boyfriend really looking out for me, trying to make sure I'm straight. I'm like, yo, I'm fucked up, leave me alone. I went in the hotel room, closed the door and woke up and you know, that whole little thing just kind of went down, you know? And so when, so she later retracted that you yeah. allegedly hit her, right? We never, Masika bigger than me. Mm -hmm. Like, let's be clear, like, you know what I'm saying? And not only that, like we were literally like, that situation happened. I went to jail and I was in a bed with Masika that, mm -hmm. that same night. And though, did you feel like the show and the network kind of threw you under the bus? Man, that shit was a blessing though. Like when I looked at it and I was like, damn, they trying to kill me right now. But like that shit just made me go even crazy on my grind. And that's when I kind of like, me and A1 were working in that studio. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was real competition. Like I wasn't fucking with A1 because it was like, nigga, I'm trying to cut your head <laughs> so off. So at the you time you guys weren't a team? Nah, nah, nah. nah. Okay. Mm -mm. And then so around that time is when you said, so the blessing is, it, you thought you were losing something with Love and Hip Hop, but it was really getting you off of that to get back to what was important? I don't know how niggas do that shit. That show was mad stressful, bro. Like, so you how, know what I'm saying? So how, you were just at the reunion when Ray, poor Ray, got beat down by Zell Swag. What did yeah. you, how was that experience for you? Man, that was crazy. I ain't gonna front. Like, that was crazy. Because mm -hmm. I actually, I fuck with Zell. Like, you know what I'm saying? As crazy as he is, I'm like, it's good for TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think he went a little too far. You know what I'm saying? Well, I interviewed Ray in my office. Um... I just have this way of doing interviews. Like this interview, I'm just having a good time because I'm containing a lot of the messy shit for later because we just got here. Right. But <laughs> when I interviewed Ray, it was almost like when I got shot. I watched the doctor, you know, do a couple incisions and stitches and he was very precise in how he did that because he knew in the end he had to sew me up. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I interviewed Ray, it was all of that precision and all that because he's full of shit. <laughs> uh, and I think that you know when you get on that show you already know what it is you know what the culture is everybody here is with the shit yeah. for the most part mm -hmm. and yeah. Zell is really with the shit yes with very much shit. so did you feel though that he took advantage of Ray or snuck him because Ray said in the interview that you were you went back to the room and checked on make sure he was cool and you felt like yeah, it was yeah, fucked no, up I did, yeah. I did. it was Tierra hey, said I mean, it looked crazy in person. Like it that, was, yeah, that's the it thing. looked it, even it looked worse in person crazy than it, in person. it showed in, in but, on you know, TV. I mean, shit, if you beefing, I still wouldn't let a nigga get that close to me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> so it, that, was, that was on him at the end of the day. <clears throat> and then Zell said he made like some face. Like he didn't want to hug, so he was like, "Oh, I'm about to snuff you." <laughs> right. So Mona, Mona was wondering. I mean, because we had gone back and forth. We recently just had a really big meltdown, me and Mona, because oh, offline. Because I don't do the whole Instagram thing yet. Uh, I try to pick up a phone or text. Basically, yeah. what I said was the reason why I chose not to come back because I miss everybody over there. Yeah, yeah. Is that I felt like they were going in a direction where they wanted a bunch of gays on the ground fighting like orangutans. Mm -hmm. I just had bigger dreams for myself. Right, right. <laughs> do you smart move, bro? What are your thoughts on, or both of you, any one of you? What are your thoughts on how <laughs> Love and Hip Hop's uh, introduction of the gay relationship is now on TV? Because first we had the fake relationship the first season with the uh, oh, damn who was that Miles and them, and then now this yeah. season were you there then? I don't think you were there. Okay, uh -huh. so then this season you have you know Ray and his fake relationship, and then all the crazy was there. What do you what do you think about it? Shit, man, I mean it's good. You for TV. are asking two very alpha straight men what they think about the gay relationship. They work in music. Have any of you worked with Frank Ocean? 
Nah. No, but them pants he had on his birthday were <laughs> wild. <laughs> Shout out to Frank Ocean, another Scorpio. Shout out Love to you. Frank, yo. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I, 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 have, I ain't gonna lie. I saw those red pants on on the fader, and I did reach out to Frank. <laughs> wow. Okay, but I just think personally, I think that there, you know, you interact your 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 wife. She gets her hair done. She gets her makeup done. Yeah. You interact with people in the gay community who are part of the culture, who are part of music. Yeah. And we all ain't fighting like that. We all ain't behaving like that. So. I just nah. don't know what your thoughts are if you have any on mm -hmm. loving hip hop and I mean, it's good for TV. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what I'm saying it's good for TV. Were you um, worried about putting your relationship on, you know, on full display for public consumption with Lyrica? Like, um, were you never worried? Yeah, ever. Okay, you seem like a cool cucumber. Yeah. But I'm were never you worried, but were, stressed, none of that? But oh, were man. you concerned when you brought your moms into the show and then they were fighting and doing all that? Because I thought your mother, I will never forget, I was walking backstage at the reunion, hit that corner, and your mom was in that first room, and I said, I had never met her, I yeah. said, I got your back. <laughs> <laughs> now, I ain't gonna lie, I was a, I was a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> Them too, I was a little worried. Because mama like, drama was exciting. Yeah, that was, and that was a real thing, like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, that still goes on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They got better, but mm -hmm. shit. I just try to like, you know, balance it out. Have they had contention since the beginning of your relationship? Have they yeah. always, yeah? Yeah, what's, I mean, what's that about? Is it like, nobody's good enough for my baby type situation? Now you know what it is. Um, my mom, when I moved my mom out here, mm -hmm. uh, Lyrica, she was getting, getting her hair done. I had to take her. Mm -hmm. My mom didn't have a key. Uh-huh. For some odd reason, Lyrica's mom had a key to our first apartment. Okay. And um, so my mom was seeing that. She like, well, shit, I need a key. Uh huh. So she went out, and then I took Lyrica to get her hair done. And then my mom was like, yo, I'm locked out. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, shit. So Lyrica like, yo, just call my mom and have her. I'm like, nah, that's not the move. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So enough time passed. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Mm -hmm. So her mom lets my mom in. They sit down. And she's like, so how long you plan on staying here? <laughs> and my mama like, why? This is my son's house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then she like, nah, this is my daughter's crib. So it was like that. And they literally called me and all I heard was two grown ass women yelling the top of their lungs. Mm. And by that time I was on the freeway, I was doing like a hundred. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got there and they was in each other's face, like spitting all type of shit. Damn. Lyrica mama going crazy, <laughs> talking to me crazy, showing her titties. I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> is going on? You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. Like, yo, they was lit. Mm -hmm. And this was happening. This they was it was like a whole hour. I'm surprised the police didn't come. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So is it just what's the what is the competitiveness so between there, the two of them? Yeah. It was just on. Oh damn! Okay, so I sympathize with you. So, I says, that sucks. So you have all this jewelry on, and you know there was a there was an era where you seem to be just getting into robbery after robbery. You it, the online stuff. How much of that is antics, and how much of that is really happening? I can't speak on that. That was ten years ago. Like you know, what I'm saying I'm mm -hmm. so far removed, but like. And that shit was just growing pains, you know? Like, a lot of times when you get in this business, it's, like, key and essential for you to have the right people around you. Right. Mm -hmm. And for a young nigga like Was that myself, when you first came from Chicago? Yeah, oh, like, okay. I was, like, 19, 20 years old, a millionaire out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I had a bunch of yes men and people that didn't have my best interests at heart. And, you know, those type of situations happen. And, gratefully, I was able to learn from it at a young age. And mm -hmm. now I'm... 30 years, I don't know what I'm doing. And it's so crazy that there's a whole other culture within the industry people outside don't even know about. Right. You know, and crazy. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, you know, I kind of feel like when I was watching it all go down, I'm like, okay, I, did, I wasn't as aware of it as I am now, but right. now I'm like, that that ain't nothing compared to everything else going on. I there, mean, there's I, worse happening to people that people know that they don't see. Yeah. I was the first one over the hill for y'all niggas. I took them <laughs> shots, so I don't care. <laughs> And you came back bigger and better than ever. Okay, mm -hmm. so now back to Masika's foot. Oh, wow. Oh, God. <laughs> when, yo, what's up with you and Masika right now? Because I literally, like... I don't hate Masika at all. Yeah, We, we want we we cool. to get her on the show. Yeah, she's coming next week. Yeah. Really? Oh, shit. She's no, amazing. I, no, when she comes, I'm gifting her a foot bath. She what? She not fat either. I just no. seen her. She came to the studio. She wasn't. Fat. She, she not fat. Like a lot of niggas. Like Zell. I'm not gonna front. That nigga's the most entertaining nigga on the show besides my brother A One and Lyrica. But I, mean, I thought I was entertaining on the show. You're not on the show right now. Yeah. You're talking about currently. Got it. 
yeah. mean, you was throwing drinks. So I mean, you was in your bag. No, nah, <laughs> there, there was a lot going on. <laughs> so, no, I have no issue with Masika at all. I think what I kind of feel like is when the whole thing went down with the Brandy baby, I just never really, anything that sides with anybody who attacks somebody's children, I just, I don't fuck with it. But we're cool personally, and she does look good. Yeah. Her baby's beautiful. Yeah. Um, ironically, her baby's eyes are really gorgeous, too. Yeah, they swear that that baby is mine. They need, Alexis Sky, you need to relax, my G. See, A1 Congratulations on your pregnancy, Alexis, and um, just keep my name out the mix you know what I'm saying Wait, like, um, Alexis's baby is supposed to be yours no nah. she's ins Alexis is insinuating that Masika's yeah. child is his and the crazy shit is like wait uh, now that I look at the eyes <laughs> hey yo chill that's what he <laughs> <laughs> Alexis and um, Lyrica and A1 and Solo Lucci they, they were really they really cool so like yeah. they would be in the studio and like you know me like I don't really deal with that love and hip hop shit. Like I ain't speak one word to Alexis. Like I was seeing, hey, and that would be it. So I mean, I just thought it was flaw for her to say that, but I know that she's a young girl going through shit, and she got to defend herself by any means necessary. You and know? now she's a mother in waiting. She has a kid on the way, and mm -hmm. her kid and Masika's kid are gonna be in the same playground, and that is gonna be some Hollywood Unlocked wants yeah. to cover. For that boy sure. WAP, I'm telling you, he he. He, you know there's you know there's a spinoff coming. Yeah, he Fetty Wap and all his WAP Wap. He look at a bitch getting pregnant. <laughs> For real. I would rather see Fetty Wap and uh Stevie Wonder Holy driving shit. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> a car. Like driving the karaoke. Then a, a reality show. And switching on driving. You know, like, him and all his baby mamas. No, just Stevie and Fetty on the road. Oh. We got love, Fetty. You want to hit? Come holler at me on one. Yeah. Other than that, you know, tough. <laughs> okay, so, all right. So, um, okay, so we, we're, you don't want to talk about the foot. Okay, so when you look at love and hip hop now, do you say, I mean, you, you watch it to support your partner and you're using it clearly to elevate your business. Mm -hmm. Do you look at it and just go, thank God I, I, I'm off that shit? I be dead, yo. I be tuned in like, holy shit. Because I know everybody and just like, Niggas is really fronting, like you said. You know what I'm saying? Like, even like, you know what hurt my soul? Like, <laughs> for Hazel to be treating that man like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Which she, man? Rose Burgundy, like, okay. she's so bossed up. Like, mm. she got this bag and all this other stuff. And it's just like, wow. Like, that's, niggas would do anything for some airtime. <laughs> Tough. Okay, so when they jumped off the helicopter, you weren't feeling all that? <laughs> I thought it was corny. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't have a helicopter. <laughs> Why do that, though? I mean, but look, in her defense, due to the way her face was, the way God made her face, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The DNA and the genetics that came together for that face in season one, like, it, it, it went bad for her. You know what I'm saying? So she had to come back and do whatever it took. You're, you're making Melissa very wet right now. I, no, you're any, not. Any, no. Anytime, anytime she could be in a room where Hazel's getting shot down by a bazooka. She's not getting shot down, nigga. She'll tell you herself her nose was crazy. But she looks more like Nikki Baby now. She's, 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 uh, she's, I think she looked crazier now than she looked eight years ago. Hmm. She looked like a woman eight years ago. She kind of looked like, under, you know, under the act. So what do you think of Tierra Marie? You were the one out that she had uh, went to rehab online. Yeah, I thought that shit was mad corny. It's like, yo, like you in a room full of a bunch of niggas that do drugs. You know what I'm saying? Like personally, I've saw you do drugs. I see you turn up. And it's just like, damn, like how could y'all be the right people for an intervention? And not only that, the show feeds you liquor. Like they get well, you she, fucked up. Tierra was just here crazy. last week and said they were giving her alcohol in the car. Oh man, listen, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. We used to be lit the whole time shooting that shit. No, you gotta yeah. be drunk. No, you but do. The, but you the do. I, wait, you but do. the idea is they were. She was drinking liquor outside, waiting to go For shoot the intervention, intervention scene. <laughs> oh nigga. yeah. Okay, so A1, when you're there at the reunion, and you know he's still a part of VH1 family. We love. I have lunch with yeah. VH1 next week. Yeah. When you're watching this and you're seeing her go to rehab, are you thinking good for you, Tierra? Because she looked amazing. She did. No, she looked amazing. Yeah, yeah. post rehab glow up is official. Did you think it was the right thing to do, intervening on TV like that, or? Oh man. Nah. If y'all care, don't make a mockery of this woman. Yeah. Like in my eyes, they cooked her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like she, like, like I'm glad she glowed up and did everything. But if that didn't change, like they made her look like she would probably never get work in this business again. And this is coming from somebody that was typically blackballed from my own, like from niggas robbing me or doing something to me. Like nobody wanted to touch me with a 10 foot fucking pole. And now I'm able to work with everybody. So I just knew as a creative where, how it felt like, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, damn, like 
y'all making me look like a fucking drunk psychopath mm-hmm. on TV. And it's like, we all drunk. Mm-hmm. Everybody here on set <laughs> drunk right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shit was blowing. And so, so they, if they cared, they what they would have said, "You can't drink." Offline, on don't embarrass this woman on national TV and make her look like she's something that nobody else is as a cast member. Like A one, don't even drink like that. You know what I'm saying? He mm-hmm. he might be exempt from it, but whatever. You don't drink? Nah, my dad's an alcoholic, so. <sighs> my, well, I'm an alcoholic too, so I understand. Yeah. My mother- Functioning. We're both yeah. functional alcoholics. He's yeah. really fucked up. Though. Were you going to say something? No, I mean, I'm still going to talk about your drinking problem. But okay, well, no. I'm over okay, that. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think she should have focused more on the music, yeah. like because she, you know, she had it. She had something. You gave her a hit like a couple years ago. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And so then, where's it at? You, you guys have to figure out, figure it out, or what? I'm not working with her ever again. Why? The VH1 cooked her. Mm. That's my mean? nigga though. Like they killed her. You mean with the rehab situation? Yeah, man. Well, don't you don't you think that since she came back, she was on the show. She talked about the rehab experience and how it was one of the best things that could ever happen to her. And everybody loves a comeback story. And you know, she you looks and, like the and old Tiara. And she looks fabulous. So it, it it's it would appear that people are rooting for her. So she hasn't exactly been. And you she know, said she would, and she when I asked her if she would want to work with you again, she said yes. Yeah, she, she wants. She's done. She wants to work. I love her. Mm-hmm. Let's be clear. In terms of working with Tier again, that's not happening. For me personally, no. Mm. Mm. But I do love her, like so, genuinely. So you're at Atlantic Records and Cardi B, she's right now number one at the top of the Billboard chart. Mm-hmm. She's on the cover of Rolling Stone's 50th anniversary. Oh God, her picture is so good. She yes. looks amazing. So good. What do you guys think about that? Because sometimes people just throw love and hip hop under the buses. It's a shitty platform, but it is a big platform that does provide, you know, some fuel to some talented mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. What do you think about it? Man, um... Cardi B, she dope. Shout out to the producer, mm-hmm. Jay White. Yeah. He actually was signed to me. I was a little angry because like the contract was over, and three months later. So when a song happened. like that goes number one, <laughs> what does that? What happens? Like on a producer, do you guys get a lot of money? Is yeah. it okay? You do yeah. it now. Now he's a, he's he's in the millions. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wait, you That's get fast. millions from a number one hit? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. You could go do a pub deal potentially. It's a yeah. lot of different things you could do. So somebody like me who's talented and I can rhyme and rap and write and all that. I mean, I'm not a rapper, but I'm very no, I'm very talented with words. Wordplay, I can I you know I can how, be a rapper. You know how many nigg- you know how many niggas rappers. I didn't talk that I'm in a relationship with that girl? <laughs> I got love songs in me. So if I wanna write <laughs> So if I wanna if I wanna write, do I do I like call you up and say, Hey, I have an idea for a mixtape? And w- do I come in with an idea, or do- y'all laughing at me? But I'm telling you, when I when I get up there and get that Grammy, I'll be like, yeah, a one. What's Bert. your mixtape gonna be called, Jason? I don't know yet. I've I mean, because we happen. homies would we'll definitely give you a chance, but yeah. if you was just somebody else, <laughs> what's the fuck? budget? What's huh? the budget? What's the budget? I gotta ask Floyd about that. <laughs> oh man, yeah. In, in fact, I was gonna tell you that. Man, I, I heard he got a label. You need to, you know, Jeremiah was telling me some things or whatever. Like mm-hmm. Floyd, he does. Us. He probably he yeah. probably just needs, you know, maybe you and the structure you could provide. Well, as a, we did just start a label. Yeah. Oh, well, I, just, I gotta connect him to Red. Red will do all that. Okay. I'll, I'll make that. I, I promise. Okay. Okay. So we're on the show. I'm mad because my team is being abused by Black China. I'm telling everybody how I feel because I get in my feelings. I'm entitled to do that. I'm gay. Happens half of the time. (laughs) And I'm in New York chilling in my hotel room, and I get a phone call from you, so I answer the phone. Uh You're calling. You're not. You're usually calling because you want to criticize something in a positive way that I've done, or we just want to be petty. Right. So on the call is Black China, an artist of yours. No, she's not an artist of yours. She's a friend. We've co- we've we've worked together. You well, that's the rumor is that you are at the helm of the ship of her. You career. are cooking up the Kardashian clapback with mm-hmm. Angela Kardashian. I like Ange. She dope. So, but you guys have a song together, right? Or you have a song you produce for her? We did. Okay, so you called me with her on the phone, and just to clear the air, you are you are behind the scenes a really good peacemaker. You like people yeah. to just get along. Yeah. Um, What's your beef with her? Because like you always, I'm a fan of the show and like I see you talk about it, but I don't understand what your situation yeah, is. Yeah, not really necessarily a beef. I think that, you know, it's easy for, I don't like to go out a lot. Like you stay in the mm-hmm. studio. I literally mm-hmm. stay in my house or on a plane or out of town somewhere. Mm-hmm. So my team, they go out and they get attacked by people because they, I say something They're on the show. They're an extension of you. Or right. I, I yeah. post something on the people Instagram or on the site and they, mm-hmm. they get mad. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like 
I can't always be there. And if I don't have the person's number, I just have the microphone. Mm -hmm. So then we talk and then I get a phone call. But people were saying that they were saying it was disingenuous because they said we made up on the phone. We didn't make up, but we agreed to talk and work together and, and have a. So let's be clear. Y'all didn't make up. You basically <laughs> hung it over her head like, nigga, if you come do the show, then holla at me. If not, then tough. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to say that, but That's no. But, the way it went but, I, but I want people to know, like, what I appreciate about you is you really are always a positive person. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, do you feel like your public image sometimes isn't aligned with what who you really are privately? I'm not an artist no more. I'm an executive and a producer. I don't give a fuck what nobody think about my public image. You know what I think is really interesting too is a lot of people have a very difficult time making a transition mm -hmm. from artist to whatever the second half of their life is. Like, right. you know, athletes who get put out to pasture and then they have to retire, they have a very difficult time dealing with, you know, the lack of the stardom. But you really actually seem like you're, this is the this is the best part of your life. Yo. That you don't miss being an artist at all. How many singles? It's because they're fucking getting <laughs> money. I mean, I understand that, but, you, but fame is a hell of a drug. Some people can't let go of that shit. Mm. You know, the limelight and stuff like that. Rather than, you know, playing the back and making all the motherfucking money. I like that arrangement. I'm gonna still be a it. handsome young guy, you know what I'm saying? Nobody's with or without it. About your looks, you know honey. what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. so it ain't really like I think people get off on fame because they trying to like they pleasure need the themselves. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like me personally, like I don't want nobody to know me. Like if I could right. do a face off like John Tavolta and Nic Nicolas Cage, I would do it. But do you feel like you learned that along the way because of all the difficulties that you went through as an artist? Yo, you know how lit it is? Like, yo, as an artist, and <clears throat> my brother A1 has a project coming. He's an amazing artist. But mm -hmm. I mean, shit, I'm just in the studio. Y'all niggas got to go on the road and <laughs> do all that extra yeah. shit. I'm in the studio just cooking up and still financially benefit in a way that an artist does. So okay, when, sorry. I, I really, there's this one question I do want to ask because we were talking about Cardi. Mm -hmm. So there's been, you know, some, a lot, one person who has been highly critical of her is Azalea Banks. She need to find some lotion. Who? Oh. Who? Yeah. Azalea okay. Banks. Who is that? Who is that? She's okay, well then I guess there's no a other question Aborigine that. who came from a bush somewhere, found her fucking camera and said she don't Here's like Here's the Cardi. crazy part is I, I had no idea what she sang or what she rapped. And then I heard a song that she was on. I was like, that's her singing? She's actually incredibly talented. But yeah. all this. But she, she smoked a couple pipes. All, yeah. So look, I have a question. All the love music that you're making and people are throwing pussy at you now. Do you, do you struggle <laughs> being married to a beautiful singer songwriter who's very successful in her own right and turning down a bunch of pussy as it's laid out for you nah. in the r and <clears throat> world? Me and, my, me and my wife, we'd be on the road together. We'd be having fun together. Does that mean you have threesomes no, together? No, no, okay. no, no. So do you ever invite, have you have you invited anybody in the bedroom? Because somebody watch a show, if, if they did, they, they're going to say something. No. Nah. Oh, okay. So if there was one, <laughs> <laughs> if there was one celebrity, uh, well, when do you decide to go raw with somebody? Do you think, <laughs> well, I mean, because in the rock and roll world or music world or entertainment world, sometimes you get, because there's a lot of Hennessy, there's a lot of brown juice at the studio. <laughs> when you're sipping, condoms aren't always the first thing you grab. <laughs> Yo, you got to really be on that, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, we all done rolled a, a, through our dick on a crap table. You know what I'm saying? A night or two. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, you got to try and stay focused. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy out here. And temptation is a motherfucker. And, like, when you are faded, you do get into situations or whatever. But, I mean, now that <clears throat> I'm, I'm, like, going up and our level is going up, it's just like, man, like, you can make a decision that could last you a lifetime. You see Tyrese crying on a fucking Instagram right Jesus now. Jesus Christ. What do you think about that? What are you doing? He yeah. is, he's he's crying on Instagram right now as we speak because he's wow. broke and saying he, he's broke. He's losing all his money. He needs to get because a hit. Y'all need to go over there and work in Voltron Studios. What is that? He has a studio <laughs> on his compound called Voltron Music. Yeah, he has a label. He has a label. Yeah, tough. tough. Mm. That part. Well, there's a lot of black boy joy in the room. <laughs> 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 all right, so <laughs> okay, so the net so. With love and hip hop, are you going back next season? Because this season has been a lot. I'm, I'm really. We had Keisha Cole in here not too long ago. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. trying to follow all these storylines. Yeah, Alexis yeah, yeah. was almost pregnant by two different people and huh. ended up Shout pregnant out. by Shout a guy who wasn't even on the show. Lucy, <laughs> right? Lucy. Who, which is a nice guy. I ran into yeah, him at brunch. Okay, but uh, I'm trying to follow these people. So Brooke, Brooke, what do you think of Brooke on the show? She dope. But Brooke she is a dope. friend with, with your girl, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they friends. Mm. What do you think about uh, Bridget? Bridget Cole. Pussy popping in the air? Pussy popping? 
That shit Amen. was clown shit. <laughs> Shout out to Billy J. Um, right, he works close. He was my manager back in the day. He's still my boy. He also works with Bridges Kelly, and he does a scooty bike shit with Ray J. It was straight clown shit. You don't put your people in a predicament like that for Ray J to write a trash ass song called Pussy So Good when this girl has an amazing voice, and now you shooting fucking money guns out your box looking hey, like I, a straight I, clizzer. I kind of like that song. You know, he's diplomatic. <laughs> I, that shit is trash. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't a fan of the song. I didn't really, yeah, the song. So Bridget, and, and Br- are you familiar with Bridget? I, you know Bridget. I love Bridget. Okay. Bridget and me are super cool. And I did not line that song up with her. Oh, she's laying on the bed with a Supreme, with a gun. I don't even yeah. know if it's Supreme between her vagina shooting money. I'm talking about pussy Girl, popping in the fur. Bridget, come up on the show so we can have a conversation. No, she's coming. I just Louise. I just talked to her yesterday. She but just I, didn't pull it off. I was, was it. I was, <laughs> no. But see, it was a dope idea. She didn't pull it off. <laughs> it, it, it was a, it's a dope idea for another artist. Yes. Right. I think Bridget Kelly, I think Rock Nation, I yeah. think R and B songstress. Yes. Um, I don't think pussy popping on her pussy might be popping, but just not on loving hip hop in the air with the fur and all. I ain't like I mean, the way they, they made her look like a thought though. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not shit. what she is. They yeah, she that wasn't my song. experience. Yeah. That wasn't my experience with her. You know what I'm saying? I thought I thought she was a cool chick. Yeah. Okay, so why do you hate Ray J? Who? I think he's indifferent. Really? Yeah, I think he's indifferent. No, no, no. Let, let me be clear. Let me mm-hmm. let me be frank. I got a gonna lot ask. of love for Ray J. I think that a lot of moves that he did were clownish, mm-hmm. and therefore we won't ever speak again. Mm. Okay. And we can still coexist somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. But as far as like us being buddy buddy or something like that, it's a negative. Okay. Mm. So with this latest project, Chris Brown, that's your latest project that's out now. Ty Dolla Sign, so, Chris Brown. Well, Chris Yo just Gotti. came out yesterday. So yeah. who are yeah. all the people you work with? Ty Dolla Sign. Ty, Chris, Jeremiah, Nelly. Everybody. Your boy. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Jesse J. Nice. Ariana Grande. Wow. Ooh, Damn. Name them. Okay, and so when you do Where's all Khalifa? these- So when you do all these tracks, you sell them the beat, so you get money up front. Mm-hmm. And then if it's for a label, the label's paying you too? Well, you know, we sell the beat and preferably we would like a songwriter's fee as well. So it's kind of like a double up thing. So that's the upfront and the back end. Both. So you sell it to the artist, you sell it to the label. To the label. And then they go off and make the song. And then when they tour, it becomes number one, all that. You're just getting paid every time they do that. Yeah. Like every single spin on the radio, For you sure. guys get like a check. Have you guys yeah. thought about creating like a songwriter's producer boot camp or something? Because I'm telling you, I'm talented and I'm not even just That's playing. what the studio is yeah. going all actually. So I have to sit in there and go through that. Bro, you came for like 10 minutes. I'm like, <laughs> let me play you some records. You're like, uh. This, he, he's AD, ADHD right over here. No, but I'm trying, I'm trying different things. I'm trying Adderall. Uh, I tried <laughs> Molly. here to help. <laughs> tried, tried, <laughs> Molly, tried Molly last week. That did not work. What happened? Or did it? Or did it work? It was a bad batch. It was, or, no, it was just too much was going on. Mm-hmm. I had to go home. You had you had a goal in mind, and I think you Let's achieved. Let's continue with this interview. <laughs> oh, so okay, so what's next now <laughs> for the for the two of you? Are you going back to loving hip hop? Man, um, shout out to Mona. I love them. Um, Treva, mm-hmm. I love everybody. That's so. Are you going back to the show? And I said shout out to Mona Scott. <laughs> <laughs> He Shout out to Trevor. Like I, I do. love everybody. <laughs> They're getting ready to go through the renegotiation process. Yeah. That's, that's what that is. That's what that is. Okay. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I love the show. I love everybody over there. Get the check. I love everybody. And so, right. with you now that you're over Atlantic, what is your actual title, Vice President of A and R? Damn, he lit. That's imp- he lit. Congratulations. Thank you. Love. That's awesome. And so, do you just what do you attribute to getting there? Is it just all the hard work? Is it just locking yourself down and focusing on that? Is it not getting in a relationship and putting your career for what is it? He he reinvented himself. No, yeah. really. Yeah. Don't even call him Berg no more. Hitmaker. He's hitmaker. Okay, so to okay. Berg. Okay, so I wait, felt no. a little disrespected. Yeah. For me? Yeah. And you, you, you know, know it's hitmaker too. Like, no, I know, you know it's no, I know it's hitmaker, <laughs> but I swear if you call my phone right now, I'm gonna change it when you leave. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. learn I'm learning something new. Yeah. So it's hitmaker now. Mm-hmm. Okay, done. Okay, so let let me just for those that didn't know. So Youngberg is the artist. No, right? Uh, who? Youngberg who? died who? and they okay. buried him. Yeah. So we yes. went through a whole Miley Cyrus of hip hop experience just five <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> okay, this is Hitmaker. Yeah. All right, so Hitmaker, I'm telling you right now, everybody's listening right now. I'm texting Kaiser when you leave. Yeah, dope. We are creating a experience. I don't know what it's going to be called. Mixtape, EP, <laughs> album. 
single. Yes. Oh, Alyssa, when, when this write up gets done by whoever on Hollywood Unlocked, Hitmaker. Listen, if you can I take. Will... So when Black China is going through everything she's going. What is her rap name? Is it China? Black or China. a singer? A singer or rapper? She does. Um, hmm. You can't even talk. I'm about not it. really trying to promote her like that. Like, I like Ange. You know what I'm saying? Like, but we not working together no more. Okay. You heard it here first. Hmm. Tuh. <clears throat> Tuh. Okay, so are there any more explo <laughs> explosive or exploitive things that you want to say before we end the show? Before you drop the mic. Who had know. the most raggedy pussy in Hollywood? Because <laughs> hmm. we're going to get that answer. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, I'm not going to go there. You know, I'm off love and hip hop. Like, I'm not really doing the, the you know, raggedy pussy. Like, you could have said who got the best pussy or who okay, got mom. Who, 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 who had the best, best pussy? pussy? Melissa Ford. He's we've never fucked. Never. Still He's early. beautiful. Thank but, you. Um, Appreciate that. Who got it? It is very good though. Who got that touch and bust? Mm. Touch and bust? <laughs> <laughs> I'm using that. I'm using touch that. Touch and bust. <laughs> So my new thing when I bring a new girl into my life, like, bitch, I'm going to put you on, but you, do you have the touch and bust? <laughs> For sure, it got to be that. It has to be that. Yeah. Uh, well, who know. has the touch and bust? Mm. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Just. Okay, right, so right. Who, what, is, what is one celebrity chick that you've been with that nobody knows? Like Tierra shared recently that she was with Lil Wayne. Not recently, but they were together before. Yeah, she shared that on the show. You you married Lyrica? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Play it safe. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm trying to keep my my car decent. Like if I, I get on here and I get to talk about who got the best and worst box, like you could damage my my vibe. Okay, well I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But if you want to throw it out there, you can. <laughs> nah. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. <laughs> Have you ever been with a Kardashian? No, that can't answer. Okay, well, listen. This is the end of our show. Oh, what is it that you want people to know right now? What's coming up? What's mm -hmm. going on? I mean, they you're very active on social. They can find it. More number ones. Um, staying creative. Good energy. You know what I'm saying? And staying sucker free. Yeah. Building, mm -hmm. building our brand. Um, my single is out called Tough. Always featuring Todd Allison and Chris Brown. And I'm dropping a, a EP next month called Tuh. Okay, well, I would love a feature if I could be on there. I'm <laughs> Yo, just fam, give trying. us some bars right <laughs> yeah. now, B. No, like, we can't end the show without some hot die line I, fire. I have to practice all of my uh, freestyling. <laughs> bro, I know your shit gonna be mad explicit. Like, you, yeah. on, you on straight bullshit. I've always bro. said I'm not gonna write my book and I'm not gonna drop a single or an EP until I Yo, have enough money your for Your Korean book would be crazy. So, you fucked her though, right? Of course. Okay, now I recently, she attacked me somewhere I went. She thought I had attacked her kid, which I'm like, I don't even fucking know your kid. I don't know nothing her about you. Her kid is cool too. No, probably. Do you, is that somebody you would want to go home to now? I mean, are you looking, would that be wifey? Because back then when everybody was fucking her, I don't know how that was all happening. But, yo, do you have a in special? In her defense, mm -hmm. not only is whatever the sexual favors phenomenal, but she's a dope girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she, now she's crazy mm -hmm. if you get on her bad side. But like, yo, if you stay out her way and just, you know what I'm saying? Be, keep it cool she 100 if you google superhead you'll find pictures of melissa ford really <laughs> it's un because it, is it super <laughs> no no because they used to say they looked alike oh really oh uh, I, I it's not yeah. an insult yeah. I, it, I, it, she's it, a beautiful woman too. she she's very attractive and even i have to admit we favor each other did like she did she have touch and bust too oh corinne <laughs> <laughs> she's she heavy she she's out of here <laughs> all right well don't wrap us up yet. Keep going. Talk that <laughs> shit. Yeah. Wait, this no. might be the, this. This my last hurrah. So when you were playing stepdaddy to Bow Wow's kid, never. <laughs> no, I mean when you were with Joey, clearly she never brought that her daughter around me, and I will res I respected her. Okay, never. Because mm -hmm. Bow's coming on the show soon. So when Bow, he is? yeah, you told me he was gonna come on the that show. That nigga's a straight goofy. Mm. But why don't you like Bow? Because I mean he's he's reinvented himself. He's Shad, Shad Moss, Shad Moss. That nigga just need face paint. You know what I'm saying? Like he year round clown. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yesterday. Like, I, but he's a hater just for women reasons. Like we don't really have no real beef. You know what I'm saying? He's mm -hmm. just a sucker. But did you guys fall out over the girl? 
Cause that Joy, happens. I was dating Joy before she was Bow's baby but, mother. Okay, so mm-hmm. it wasn't that. So then, where did the where did the I was beef- Ray J. I hit it first. That's hysterical. <laughs> so, well, maybe that's what the part part of the problem is is that he wanted Joy. I'm bad Bow Wow. I'm what Bow Wow wants to be. You know what I'm saying? So like that's part. And of the beef. I enjoy <laughs> little Bow Wow, like the guy that the Brad and like Jermaine Dupri were writing all his raps, and like he was cultivated by a woman. You know what I'm saying? Like but, I like that nigga. But I saw you said that recently on the Breakfast Club. But but, but the Brad, technically, I mean, she's a little edgy. She wrote "Bounce with Me." She wrote all them shits that we love. We love them little Bow Wow songs. So she was getting, um, she was getting royalties in prison. Then I'm just trying to figure out how this works. <laughs> when she yeah. was in jail, she was getting checks. Yeah. yeah. See, the thing is, is that Bow is like, tough. He's nothing to me. I'm like Jermaine. Like you called him a pillow talker one time. Yeah, because he Cause told he, yeah. he told Corinne that I wasn't famous enough to be fucking, and he should on, she should only be fucking Lil Wayne and him. But you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to do that. That's clown shit. Any nigga that talk about another man with another female is a sucker, and I think that I, women judge that character of that man as soon as it happens. I'm judging like a motherfucker. What yeah. does that mean? You I'm, had somebody. Oh, if a guy do is, guys pillow talk with you? Yes, for sure they do. <laughs> really? Yes. Is it because they want to get the pussy, so they're gonna do whatever it no, takes to hate? No, on? no, no, no. Pillow talking is after you got the pussy. Okay. It's your pillow talking. You're laying in bed and shit like that. But usually, it's like a guy who wants to make another guy look, you know, shitty in your eyes, and it's so related. You, so he and can it's keep related, you. And it is, but it's related to jealousy, which is insecurity, which are very feminine traits. So yeah. if you exhibit those feminine traits as a man, I don't want anything to do with you. You are bitch made. So mm-hmm. you don't. So Bow Wow has no chance with you. <clears throat> are you what? Are you fucking kidding me? Bow Jason, stop. I mean, if I was Bow Wow, you would be a ride I'd want to get on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, A1, you know, you. how do you coexist with this craziness right here? Um, I feel like that's how, you know, that's what makes us a team. Okay. He's crazy, mm. and I'm not. But I am. All right. So I've been critical of the little Uzi verts with the purses and the Chanel bags and all that. And you have your nails painted. And I know yeah, people so. online have had something to say about you painting your nails. Is that just oh, yeah. rock star shit? Yeah. Or what is that? Because I, I look at it very different than Lil Uzi. First of all, I always said you can't be unattractive and do all that extra shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like because pick a struggle. It's, it's just too much. And it's just so aggressive when I turn on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. To, to the gel nails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you only have them black. Yeah, that's the only color. That's some rock star shit. That's like that's flash. Hey man, yeah. I might I might go Dennis Rodman one day with the nails. You know what I'm saying? Don't Just go listen. Dennis Rodman. <laughs> hey, he, no, because he's different. No, but like no, nails? but because he ended up, Dennis Rodman caught hepatitis. Yeah. What? Uh, Didn't no, Dennis Rodman catch what? hepatitis? What's that? Um, it's the, it's not like, from pl- nail polish. It's like HIV, yeah, but you can't oh, no. get rid of it. Whatever Plenty. it is, we don't want it. Look, Yo, you, you know, stay no. talking about you know. <laughs> no, I'm saying when you said when you say he's on his rock star shit, he says he's gonna pay him like Dennis Rodman. There was a tie, but we just it was too much. No, I was I was saying I might go Dennis Rodman like, colors. but that's because you're just on some rock star shit. Yeah, and I'm yeah. A, I'm a rock star man. Like like with the face piercing. I don't even do stuff, drugs, right? but I be up all night. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Man, don't mm-hmm. drink. Don't you smoke, don't drink at all. You don't do nothing. Really, take a shot here and there. Damn. Well, I love how I love how much you love your girl because you my and wife. your your wife you you can't you you can't call your wife your girl nah no nah, nah see I, nah this her. is why I choose no, to can't. be over here because I'm gonna tell you what we call each other nigga it ain't, gotta, <laughs> it ain't gotta be all that baby wife girl darling like it's just too much okay so that's that's wifey yeah that's wifey she's amazing <laughs> all so, around so how do you man because sometimes she gets a little on ten. A lot. Of what I, I loved watching her this season check all those bitches across the yeah, table. Yeah, I mean, she had to let. She's like, she's really ratchet. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, real life, she's yeah. ratchet. This no, I was on Instagram Live the other day and she popped so in pretty. and I tried to go live with her and she didn't work. <laughs> so pretty. Yeah, she's yeah, beautiful. Nah, so she's you can beautiful. do that shit. Get know? that Adia, her new project out. Yeah, too. Adia is out, her album. It's amazing. Tuh. So if Masika's kid ends up being yours, do you. <laughs> do you <laughs> What do you do from that? Because it's a beautiful baby. <laughs> you know what? Um, damn. If I knew Masika was popping them type of babies out, I might have dropped Whoa. some in there. Mm. That baby is beautiful. Like North she, she called it Northwest. Like for real, yeah. she did. Oh. I love Masika. Yo, when Masika come up here, I'm gonna call Masika when I leave here, man. Like she coming next week. Oh, you we got I'm gonna tell her go in on you. You know what I'm saying? What if? <laughs> what, what if? So what if Love and Hip Hop came back and said we need you to close out one more season? Good fucking luck. 
Mm. And probably like after this interview, they all gonna hate me anyway. So it's like they ain't gonna want me around. Like even A one, like when he be doing this thing, like he be like, "Yo, I got this album release party. You gonna come? Fuck no." For what? Like oh, on the show? Yeah. Like why would I be there? Like, we filmed a scene with uh, Safari and Floyd that never aired. Yeah, no, nah, that was crazy. That would have been a good scene. That was lit too. Mm-hmm. So I chimed in. We were in Miami working. Me and A One, and I chimed in with Safari, and I'm like, "Yo, bro, this girl you dating right now? Shout out to Star. He was dating this girl named Star." I'm that's like, the pretty girl with the short hair in Miami. No, that's the girl that's out here in LA that look like Black China and all them. You know okay. what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, bro, like she, she really a blood. Like she really like on some other shit. Don't fuck with it. He like, bro, I got this under control. I got it under control. Go on Instagram live. The bitch on Skid Row giving all his clothes away and to 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 fucking homeless people and all type of shit. I'm like, my G. Like I told you, <laughs> damn, she slick a prostitute. <laughs> damn, that was the girl that was supposed to be on the show this season. Yeah, she never made a debut. Ooh. I love Star too, man. Shout out to Star. I didn't appreciate when I was doing Love and Hip Hop. Star came to my studio right when she got her titties done. And I was dating Masika at the time. And then, like, her her dude DM me talking about I owe her 1500 for her to show up. And then a nigga DM Masika, like, yo, nigga, with my, my bitch. It was just weird. Stay off of Skid Road, Star. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, we really got to get out of here because yeah. we're getting pushed out the studio. Thank you for coming up here. Yes, thank Keep you, guys. Keep the music hot. I'm going to go back and write some rhymes and some some music. And then when I feel like I'm ready to step in with some hit makers. 10, yes. 12 songs a night. And then we'll put, we'll put you together. You and Zell Swag have to do a duet. No. <laughs> we'll put, well, you, know what we, you know what we'll call it? You know what we'll call it? What? Dread on the bed spread. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, we out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. Tough.